food, the most basic of human needs. Access to it is also regarded as a basic human right. Here in East Africa, three quarters of the working population is engaged in agriculture. But ironically, food shortages are constantly causing anguish throughout the region. Shortage of food doesn't just cause hunger. It leads to an inefficient workforce, interrupted schooling, and the diversion of precious finance to food imports. We all think we know the reasons for food shortages. Unreliable rainfall, bad infrastructure, pests and diseases among them. Most of these need complex and costly solutions that are well beyond the reach of smallholder farmers. But there is one menace that can be dealt with cheaply and with dramatic results. Its name is Striga, the so-called witchweed, and it's perhaps the most damaging of them all. Eradicating this weed alone would have a major and lasting impact on food security throughout the region. This is Striga, commonly known as the witch weed. Unlike other weeds, Striga has several features that until now have made it unusually hard to control. Striga attacks and destroys a wide variety of crops that are critical for subsistence and also for cash. The main ones are maize, sorghum, sugarcane and rice. Striga is a parasitic plant and it co-evolved with African small grains like millet, finger millet and sorghum. The damage begins when it attaches to the roots below ground. It feeds off those roots for several weeks, and then emerges and grows to be about 70 centimetres in height. It flowers very quickly, and just one stem produces many thousands of seeds. So when we fail to control Striga, we build seed banks in the soil, sometimes hundreds of millions or even billions of seeds lying dormant for every hectare. Striga's special features have allowed it to render huge areas of land unproductive. It's been known to destroy well over half of a pre-harvest crop. The financial implications are immense. In the region, we are almost losing like on average of 360 million US dollars per annum. That is like 1 million US dollars every day. Can you think about a million dollar investment per day in a country? Until now, the fight against Striga has been a losing battle. Small-scale farmers have simply not had the weaponry to protect their livelihood. The Striga reduces the productivity of the farmers. And where we have been producing three tons per hectare, we now have incidences where we have 1.5 or 1 ton per hectare. This is not fair to the farmers directly, in the sense that their costs go up, their production is low, so they have to dig more acres to get the same amount. The most affected group is actually the resource-poor small-scale farmers who every year, in out, cannot even buy seed, cannot even buy, let alone other inputs like fertilizer. So adding Striga to their you know, problems just finishes all their crops and they have nothing to harvest. Even more worrying is the rapid spread of the weed. Once it was concentrated just around the lake region, but now it's spreading throughout East Africa. The area under Striga infestation is going up the, into the highlands, areas where a few years ago there was no Striga. The cereal losses due to Striga are enormous. In Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania, the total infected area is just over 1.6 million hectares, with more than 2.1 million tons of cereals lost every year. The total value of these losses is nearly $600 million per annum. If it's unchecked, the damage by Striga could render East Africa's food security efforts futile. But if action is taken now, the benefits to the region's 100 million people would be massive. 
For many years, people have been working on finding solutions to this problem. And many solutions have been tried, both by scientists and farmers, to deal with the problem of striga. And originally, we started with the, uh, what we call cultural practices, that is that's just weeding and burning striga. But those cultural practices, they actually took us very many years to discover. By the time you see striga, and you realize that it is a striga, it is flowered. And by that time, probably it has done more than 60% of the damage it was going to do. So then we went back to the laboratory and we started looking for methods that will actually reduce the striga problem before it actually reduces your yield potential. The fight to control Striga has concentrated the minds of several research organisations. Working with a few farmers in affected areas and on research plots, they've come up with two groundbreaking techniques, in addition to tolerant maize and sorghum varieties. Push-pull is the name given to the first method, developed by Isipe. Cereal crops are intercropped with desmodium, a fodder legume. Over time, the desmodium releases a chemical in the soil that stops the striga from attaching itself to the crops. This enables a healthy harvest and the gradual reduction of striga in the fields. It's not just maize and sorghum, but rice that clearly benefits from the push-pull technique. Rice is becoming an important crop in Eastern Africa, and the farmers are suffering a great uh, yield loss because of striga. As you see here, lot of purple flowers in this rice field, which is which is striga, and you can see that how it is affecting the yield of the crop, of the rice crop. So what we did that we applied the same technology what we had discovered for maize, and we intercropped rice with desmodium, and we found the, exactly the same result. You can see here the, the rice is intercropped with desmodium, and it has controlled the striga in a big way, and you can see a, such a nice crop which is growing. And if you compare this field on my right-hand side and the field on my left-hand side, you can see the crop yield is almost three times. When we discovered it, we immediately shown it to the farmers, and mostly they were small-scale farmers, and they got very interested in this plant. With Anna? Since I started this technology, now I can say that I've seen a very big difference in my life. My farm is very small, only three and a half acres. I'm able to get enough crop to feed my family and even sell the surplus. The second method is specific to maize alone. It's known as IR maize and was developed by the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center in Mexico. And IR stands for Imazapi resistant. The Imazapi is the herbicide. The maize is coated with the herbicide. And the herbicide uh, protects it from the striga weed. So this curtails the striga that has germinated and attached to the maize. And secondly, it, the, it kills seeds which are in contact with the seeds of the maize. 2005, we are given now IR means, and we prove it exactly it kills. Because where you plant it, the IR means, when it germinates, you will find that there is no strike at the stem, but it is in the other side. So in the other side, it's now where we put regumes like soybean, desmodium, also to lower it down. The success of both these techniques is proven, but sadly, their impact is yet to be felt. Tackling striker can be one of the most important strategy for overcoming food shortages and even producing surplus for the international market. But the work that requires to be done cannot be done through pilot projects. It can only be done if it is institutionalized in our public strategies, public programs, government programs, NGO programs, and in a coordinated manner. So what we need now is a comprehensive program focusing at the entire region to be well funded, implemented efficiently and consistently for a period of not less than six years so that we can really put Striga under control. In East Africa, we, we belong to a very particular region.
not only politically but also geographically and ecologically. We have a lot of commonalities in terms of what we do, what we grow, what we eat, and together with that we also share a lot of problems. This includes pests and diseases of our plants. And Striga is a typical case. If we control Striga in parts of Tanzania and then we don't control and it's not controlled in Kenya or Uganda, the success that has been realized in Tanzania will again be diluted by the failures in other countries. And that is true for Kenya and Uganda as well. What we need now is a program of investment by private and public sector bodies of $400 million over the next 10 years. At current prices, we're talking about $40 million a year, mainly to investment by farmers and the private sector. The gains of controlling Striga would comfortably exceed $100 million a year over the same period. We have the knowledge and the technology to transform the lives of millions of East African farmers and their dependents. All we need now is the will to make it happen.